Gold Squad TV. Yes, I'm a little late on this, man, so y'all need y'all to forgive me. I did get to see the preseason game yesterday, but I wanted to take a day to kind of let it marinate and try to figure out the things that I felt that I needed to have a discussion on. So, this won't be a very long video. I'm going to try to make it about seven minutes long. So, um, We defeated the Magic. Not that it mattered. It was a 98-97 game. Romeo Langford hit the game winning three. I'm going to do a video on Romeo later on. Um, I'm going to do a video on him later. So I want to specifically talk about the starting lineup. Now, Hernan Gomez was in the starting lineup just for this game. They just wanted to see what he could do playing along with the starters. Um, he played decently. Don't really have an issue with Hernan Gomez. He's just going to pass the ball and shoot threes. That's what he's there for. But he's not going to be in the starting lineup unless there's an emergency or some injury. So it's cool that we got him. I think he's going to be in the Celtic uniform this year. But um, I'm not really mad about that. Celtics had a hard time getting stops. I'm going to tell you why. The guy that we paid $54 million for to keep for the next four years in the extension, that guy is the problem. And I'm going to tell you why. Time Lord is the problem. I've said this time and time again. I'm going to say this now. You're going to hear me say this a lot this year. You cannot have Time Lord be your starting center because Time Lord, for all the athletic the athletic plays that he makes and those freakishly, you know, freakish dunks that he has and all those shot blocks that he has and other than the fact that he's never healthy, Time Lord can't hit a jumper if it saved his life consistently. And, but more importantly than his offense, his offense is not so much the problem. I actually think his offense is okay. His team defense is horrendous. I heard JB screaming at him multiple times that he's not staying on his man. He doesn't communicate very well on team defense. He tends to wander off and tries to do his own thing because Robert Williams is always looking to try to make that highlight real shot block. He's a shot blocker, much how Serge Ibaka was early in his career, where Serge was falling for every up fake in, in the book and staying away from the rim other than staying in his ground and becoming more of a team defender. Eventually, Serge became a much better team defender. So it could be done, but Time Lord is not a good team defender. He's a good shot blocker. He's a great athlete. Um, could, he wipe, could he wipe the basket off? Sure. But other than that, what does he really do for your starting lineup? He can't shoot. He can't spread the floor out. Um, if he's going to be your starting center, you're going to have to have Al Horford at the four. And I think that's fine if you're going to put Al Horford at the four. However, I would prefer Al Horford to start at the five and Time Lord to come off the bench. Because Time Lord, outside of dunking and catching lobs and... um. And shot blocking every now and then, he can't. The team, his team defense is horrendous. Orlando had a bunch of baskets going to the rim, all the way to being able to shoot threes because Time Lord was not able to stick to his assignment and be able to guard down low. You see, he has the same problem Enos Cantor has. The difference is that Time Lord's a hundred times more athletic than Enos Cantor. Enos Cantor is a good low post defender. But if you're going to ask Enos Cantor to defend guys on the perimeter, man, you already seen what Cole Anthony was doing to him yesterday. It's damn near, it might be possible that Enos doesn't even make the team. Not like Ennis. But it might be possible he doesn't make the team. And then when you look at Time Lord, Time Lord is obviously going to be here for a long time, but he can't defend perimeter defense. His team defense is horrible. He doesn't stick to scheme. He tends to freestyle a little too much and gets left. Next thing you know, his guy or somebody else is getting to the rim and dunking, and you hear JB like, you're Rob, Rob. I heard that like two or three times yesterday in the first quarter alone. I feel like he's an issue. Also, it's still <laughs> early. It's the first preseason games. I'm not going to get too crazy, but there are players on that roster from last year's team that are so used to playing in Brad Stevens' system. That it's gonna be. I never. I didn't really take into consideration that it's gonna be a little while before they really connect with EA Doka's um system. EA's system is different. It's more ball movement. It's more kind of like the Spurs system in a lot of ways. Um, 
he did let JT cook. For all these people that want to sit there and say JT and JP go one-on-one -on -one a little too much, he let those guys cook within the offense, and they did. They both had strong games. JB had 25. Jay Tatum had 18. Those guys were not affected, nor really the reason if we had lost the game. They were not going to be the reason. Um, but yeah, they, you know, you has got to figure out rotations. We need to get Grant Williams the fuck out of here. He's outside of a three-point shot, he did nothing. Um, Bruno Fernando was sitting on a bench to see a minute. And I'm like, that's crazy. Josh Richardson had a, a bucket late. He needs to play more aggressive. He played way too tentative yesterday. He needs to be a little more aggressive. You know, out there. Naismith, Pritchard did their job. I, they did what they normally do. And Langford stepped up for the most part. For all the plaque that Langford gets, he hit two threes and drew a foul on one play. And, um, you know, basically the second three he hit was the game winning three. You know, you know, for people sitting there saying he only hit one bucket. No, he had two threes. And he hit a couple free throws, which made him pretty much have seven points and one rebound. Not impressive, but it's better than what he <laughs> it showed us. And I think he needs to give the kid a chance a little bit at least. Um, he looks good, though. He looks like he hit the gym a little bit. I wish he would just cut that damn hair, though. But, yeah, you know, he looks somewhat you know, somewhat decent. Ultimately, though, I, I think obviously JB impressed me. He's playing at 85% on that wrist. Um, I hope he brings the sleeve back around his elbow, though, because that, that looked naked, looked weird. Um, JT was JT, but JT didn't really show me anything that I haven't seen in this game except for his raw strength. His strength and finishing at the rim seemed a lot better, but he still got to work on finishing at the rim, and I need to see that more often. So I'm not saying he hasn't worked on it. I just want to see that more often. Um, Schroeder's, you know, jitters coming off the bench. Schroeder. It just jitters. He plays a lot like Rondo, just a better scoring version of Rondo. I just think once he settles in, he'll be fine. Um, and like I said, Pritchard pretty much showed up. He pretty much does what he does. What he does. I would have loved to see Bruno Fernando get a lot more minutes. You don't trade for him just to have him sit on the bench, man. He deserved a little more burn. I'm pretty sure he'll get burned on Saturday, but he played a hell of a lot better than what the fuck I seen Hernan Gomez play. Herman Goldman might be a better offensive player, but defensively, he is, you know, less to be desired here. Let's really be honest. So, we'll see what happens next game. Um, I believe he played Toronto on Saturday. Um, Gold Squad TV, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Gold Squad TV.